A little while ago, I released a demo which I simply called Game Feel. I dropped that game for reasons that I detailed in a blog post on my website. Check it out at firebelly.com if you're interested. As time has gone on, one thing from that game has stuck with me, and that was the weapon system. The player was given a basic fireball spellbook to start, but could later acquire a spider head that shot a spray of poison orbs. What made these weapons interesting was that you could swap between them by just swapping which mouse button you were pressing. In the heat of combat, the player could blast some enemies with a shotgun-like spray and then instantly swap to a rapid-fire long-range fireball. This seamless switching between weapons felt great. It was responsive and dynamic. There was something special about it that made me think about it regularly. A while after I shelved the Game Feel project, a game by the name of Noita came out. This game is amazing for a bunch of reasons. However, the one mechanic from that game that is relevant to this devlog is the wand crafting mechanic. In Noita, you find wands that have different properties. Wands can then be equipped with different modifiers that can drastically affect the projectiles that your wand shoots. You can make crazy wands that shoot streams of fire that explode into poison on impact with enemies. You can make a wand that shoots whirlwinds of spinning blades. And you can make a wand that shoots projectiles back at you and ultimately can kill you. This variety in the way that you can approach wand crafting keeps each run of the game fresh and drives you to keep playing the game to craft that perfect overpowered wand. This is where my newest project, which I am calling Gun Game, gets the inspiration for its mechanics. Gun Game, much like Noita, is a game about crafting your guns by acquiring different parts. But there's a twist inspired in part by the Game Feel project. You can have two crafted guns that are each controlled with a mouse button. Left mouse shoots your primary gun, and right mouse shoots your secondary gun. Additionally, these guns share an ammo pool, but more on that later. In the earliest prototypes of Gun Game, I had initially planned for the guns to be floating a certain distance away from the player. They would orbit the player and become rooted in place when firing. I played around with having the guns return to the player after a moment of inactivity. I also experimented with giving the player more control over the return of the guns. Ultimately, this control scheme felt clunky and limited by the AI behavior of the guns. It added complexity that didn't need to be there. I already had enough gameplay mechanics to make a simple yet satisfying game, so I stuck to those. This brings me to the current state of gun game. In this version, you have your two guns. One is held by the character, and one is stored on the back of the character. The left mouse button will use your primary gun, and the right mouse button will use your secondary gun. As I mentioned earlier, the guns share an ammo pool. When one gun is shot, it loses ammo, and the other gains ammo. The ammo count you have available to you stays fixed, and the way to quote-unquote reload a gun is to fire the other one. This was a design choice that solves a couple of problems that I find annoying in these types of twin-stick shooters. Firstly, there's no need to worry about looting ammo, and for me as a developer, to balance the drop rate of the ammo. The goal is to make loot drops in this game meaningful to the crafting of your guns. Adding additional mandatory loot seems to be more of an annoyance than anything. Secondly, this gives the player an incentive to not only use both guns, but to craft guns that complement each other. For example, you might want to craft a short-range gun that can knock enemies back, and then craft a long-range gun that can deal high amounts of damage over a long range. Requiring the use of both guns also adds an extra degree of variety. It's unlikely that a player will be able to craft the exact same gun between playthroughs. It is even more unlikely that a player will craft the same exact pair of guns between playthroughs. Right now, there are three valid parts to a gun. There is the barrel, the magazine, and the receiver. Here is a chart that documents the responsibility of each part. I won't go through each one right now, but the essence of the system is that each part of the gun contributes something different to how the projectile behaves. For example, the receiver defines the fire rate of the gun, and the barrel determines how many bullets are created with each shot. The goal is to make several varieties of each part. 
Right now I have shotgun parts and rifle parts. Those parts can drop as loot items in the world and be slotted into your guns without restriction. You can put a shotgun barrel on a rifle receiver if you so choose. Additionally, I will be taking a traditional approach to the loot by adding some randomness to the stats of each item as well as some special modifiers for rare drops. Now that I've laid out a very general background for the game, the question now is what do all of these mechanics look like in a gameplay loop? Right now, it's hard not to imagine a roguelike formula. These mechanics are perfectly suited to relatively quick gameplay sessions that each differ slightly from one another. I see a lot of opportunity to expand the loot system to include a currency-like item that can be used to purchase part blueprints and upgrade parts, among other things. There's plenty of room to add dynamic events that can reward you with powerful parts and unique encounters. With that said, the game is very much in flux. I'm not taking planning super seriously. I'm content to just follow the fun, so to speak, and to constantly analyze and reanalyze the state of the game. I can't promise that this one will ever be finished, but I thought you might be interested to see it. I'd also love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Does this sound like a fun idea? Would you like to play an early version of it? Let me know, your feedback is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Consider supporting my work by purchasing Swordslinger on Steam. Link in the description.